Hello, hello. Hey, um, last week's recording, you were pretty loud when you were recording. So the way that you turned it up because you were afraid the recording was too soft. Turn it down. Yeah, turn it back to where it was. It was picking up your chair noise, like every breath you took and all of that. And I tried to edit that out as best as possible, but it was a really noisy recording. So it's easier to turn it up and then have it not catch the stuff but your voice, you know? All right, I turned it down to about recording volume 0.20. Okay. Um, that's on the lower end. So is that, do you remember where it was last week by any chance? I do not. Okay. Let's do a quick test recording on your side. Okay. And then just kind of see where it's at. And then when you play it back, um, if you play it through your headphones, see if you like wiggle your chair around and see if you can get it to make noise and stuff and see if you hear that. Cause that gets blocked out on my side. So I don't know if, and obviously it's going to pick up on yours. All right. Hold on. Let me uh, do a test run. Yeah, go right ahead. Start here. All right, I'm recording on mine. And three, two, one, recording on my side now. Okay. Now that you're recording, I want you to do another countdown. Three, two, one, and then clap into your microphone. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> Only one clap is fine. You just three, two, one, oh. clap like a clapboard. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, you know, help. <laughs> I believe in doing more than what's required. Oh, okay. I only needed one clap, so that's good. <laughs> All right. So did you hear, you heard the clips playing on your side, right? Yeah. It's going to yeah. cost you some serious cock. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's rock and roll then. Fucking A. The following show will destroy your self-worth with excessive expletives, overtly descriptive sexual deviance, and more desperation for external validation than any so-called entertainment should ever be allowed. Two talentless losers who are about as insightful and provocative as a comatose jellyfish. Cinema Psyops. A tendency to deprave and corrupt those whose minds are open to such immoral influences and to whose hands a publication of this sort may fall. So if someone of a dirty bird gets hold of your stuff and it makes them a dirtier bird, then it's labeled obscene. Encouraging the lowest, most base, and animalistic of desires to all who will listen. Because we, as a society, have decided that a cinema psyops represents our base and vulgar impulses, and that acknowledging our use of it rattles our collective conscience. I was trying my best to make a positive impact in the lives of others, but secretly I was involved in a relationship that was taking over my life. Cinema Psyops. It was leaving me wounded and depressed, unable to even manage the relationships that mattered to me. Auditory vermin infesting every aspect of the human condition, spreading their filth and foul disease. The Black Plague Podcasting. Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. Welcome to the 241st straight week of Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Court, and I am sitting all alone in the studio, practicing my social distance like a true champ. Jonesing for affection, attention, and to just someone reach out and touch him is Matt. I break into uh, the studio nightly, and I lick your keyboard and mouse. You lick my keyboard and mouse breaking into the studio. So take that with your social distancing, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know how much sharing you want to do about how the social distancing and isolation thing is not working for your family or, or not, but I thought we had some really interesting stories about you guys not doing so good at hiding out. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, actually, it's not half bad. Um, both my wife and I can, I'm much more the social butterfly out of the two of us anyway, the extrovert, if to, to what you call it. But I can turn on an introvert switch really quick. Like, I know some people. We have some mutual friends uh, who they, they are social butterflies and they are having a, a real bad time right now. I can flip that switch. Do, do I get a little itchy? Yeah, I got a little itchy over the weekend. But I also had to get well. I don't know if you guys can tell. I, I'm doing a lot better now than I was last week at this time. 
Um, Nothing worse than getting a goddamn cold when uh, the apocalypse is upon you. Yeah, the pandemic uh, is hitting. Everybody's fearful of all sorts of stuff, and you get a case of the sniffles that you would normally get from your stress-induced stuff that you've been doing trying to roll out all that equipment, and you're like a social pariah. Everybody automatically assumes that you're Corona or Chrono. I think they're calling people that are infected and you know yeah. trying to go back to work or whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever names the 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 weirdos are uh, using this day these days. And by weirdos, you mean the kids? Yes, yeah, that's uh, that's exactly who I'm talking about now. But you, you get a niche, but uh, I'm not doing too terrible. Um, my wife, uh, she's like the opposite of me. She likes to be an introvert, but she can flip on the switch to be an extrovert. So, but even she's having a little bit of the, you know, all right, that's kind of enough. We all want to go out and do something now. Um, right. So we, we went out for a drive on uh, Friday night and we went around downtown at about like 9, 45, 10, wouldn't usually be bustling. Right. And there wasn't a soul in sight. Omaha's doing its best to, for the social distancing, I can tell you that. I will say that our state, I mean, as much as I may dislike some of our state and local government figureheads, they're actually doing what they should be doing, like impressively so. Yeah, I am not a big fan of our governor. I am not a big fan of our mayor, and they have both done fairly well with this unprecedented situation and um, literally unprecedented yes situation. Uh, because our president's getting ready to just say fuck it and completely undo all the sacrifices people have already made well he's desperate for a fucking rally he can't handle it anymore the undulation that he's so used to is gone and he's jonesing for a fix worse than anybody else it, it was weird to drive around see it so dead all that kind of stuff but uh uh, now that I'm well again and, and feeling normal and all that, uh, but yeah, you know, we'll see how this next weekend treats me now that I'm like normal right. and all that kind of shit. So it might be a little worse for me this coming weekend. Well, I'm I'm handling it more than less like a champ. Like this is the happiest I have been, Matt, in months. Yeah. Any reason for you to shut out the outside world and you're you're pretty fucking ready for that. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm pretty much getting to imprison my wife like a princess in a tower, too. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, you're the dragon. Yeah, I totally am. I am totally the one that's like, no, no, you got to stay here and stop throwing your hair out there. Um, yeah, yeah, come on now, Rapunzel. My my wife has finally gotten to the point where she's, like, realizing that the longer she can do this isolation stuff, the better it is and the better it is for everyone around. For the longest time, she was like, well, why can't I just go see this person? I'm like, that's... That's not how the social distancing and isolation shit works. But groups of 10 or less, I'm like, yeah, but every time you go see someone, you reset the clock on isolating to try and not spread the whatever it may be. You know, you have to act and assume as if you are already infected and you don't want to pass it on to anybody else. That's the point of staying home and staying away from everybody else. That's why you don't go visit. That's why you don't go do the gatherings like right now in our state, 10 or less, and you don't do the fuck and like you know stay six feet away from each other 10 feet or less just because you can't not be around someone else you know like you just just gotta hunker down and deal because as soon as you get together with 10 or less people guess what you just reset your clock and now you have to isolate again for 14 fucking days from that group as well every time you go see somebody you reset the fucking counter unless yeah. they have been isolated for 14 days and you have been isolated for 14 days and no symptoms have shown up on either of you after that full four 14 days, guess what? You just reset the clock. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. And, you know, last week it was Dum Dums on a, on a beach in uh, of Florida. Now it's Dum Dums on uh, California beaches. And then we had just had a shitload of Mormon kids land in Salt Lake City getting done with a mission, overcrowding the Salt Lake City airport, completely D destroying social distancing there. So Don't forget about the Cherry Blossom folks that love to go through D.C. during Cherry Blossom time and go walking around because they were all up on each other's business, loving each other strong. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think we're getting out of this un un unscathed like uh, the medical profession kind of was hoping. People are going to pay a dear price for many other people's short-sightedness, unfortunately. Well, those of us that were smart enough to maintain the social distance and to keep the social distance for as long as possible will fare much, much better. Yeah, I just yeah, I, I just get scared for the people we know and care about who, you know, maybe didn't control this at all. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. I'm doing my best to not spread it to anyone that I actually care about. Luckily for me, that's a very small number of people. And uh, <laughs> I, I will freely admit it, man. Asking me to sever physical contact with everyone else around me to where I don't go to work, I don't go to the store, I don't go be near other people. It's kind of not even a thing for me to be having a problem with. I mean, you ask me to do that and I'm all like, that's not a thing. Yeah, totally fine. You know? Yeah, that's kind of like uh, you start acting like Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He's like, no, don't, please stop. <laughs> well, no, it's not even like that. I'm, I'm more like uh, I'm not going to go full Howard Hughes, but like I'm totally cool with staying in my house. I've worked yeah. very hard to make my house a bastion of awesome for me, and I'm happy here. Like, you are going full Howard Hughes. You are never leaving your house and religiously washing your hands. Well, yeah, I guess I am. I'm going full Howard Hughes. I'm you not... are going full Howard And that's right now, that's a good thing. We need everyone to go full Howard Hughes. Yeah, completely. So this week, speaking of... Uh, Full Howard Hughes, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> and things that are things that are going to make you really need to wash your hands. Yeah, we we saw a few things that are full on. Yeah, and there's plenty of things in there that made me really want to wash my hands, and we'll get into it when we actually do the review because I'm sure you noticed it too. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but we're talking erotic nights of the living dead, yet another Joe D'Amato film with Laura Gemsner, and I wouldn't say it stars her. No, she's a featured player for sure, but it doesn't star her. We still get to see enough of her to make me happy, though. Y yes, uh, yes, she 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 has enough activity in there that uh, things are all right. And I would say that the film is definitely elevated every time that she's on screen. However, we've seen a few other Joe D'Amato favorites, like Tall Giant Drink a Man. <laughs> Are we talking about the um, the guy the from Anthropophagus? The business dude with the mustache, or oh no no no, that's the captain. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. George Eastman is the person I was thinking of. The captain. George Eastman is a Joe D'Amato favorite that keeps popping up. He yeah, I up recognized him from uh, as the uh, the crazy cannibal. Yeah, the Anthropophagus. Anthropophagus. Yeah. You know what Anthropophagus was missing, Matt? What was that? Laura Gemsner. Yeah, I think everything's missing Laura Gemsner. You know what doesn't miss Laura Gemsner? Uh, I'm going to assume this trailer? N we're not playing that yet, but movies oh. that have Laura Gemsner in it, they don't miss her. They don't. That's true. And this one doesn't miss her. <laughs> and there actually is no trailer. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little break here. We're going to play the Legion Patreon ad. We'll have a little bit of music that sort of fits in with the synthesized style music of the soundtrack. And when we come back, we will start in on the review. This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com, or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now... Back to the cutting room.
music has a definite, very synth wavy, sort of like the score that we had, and it still has this like dark edge to it, but at the same time has that same porno beat. So I figured that fit really well with the type of movie we're talking about here. Yeah, I agree. Good job. Yeah, it's really hard to find fucking royalty free shit that you can use. Yeah, like right. That. It really is. It seems weird. You think royalty free porn music would be easily found? Oh, well, there's a lot of porn music where it's just like nobody cares about it anymore and it's been abandoned, and there's some collections of that kind of stuff, but you know, people claim copyright on some of those things all the time on YouTube and stuff just because they can and they can get away with it. Huh. Well, what a bunch of dicks. Yeah, well, YouTube, it's full of a bunch of dicks, including us. Stop stop hoarding shit, assholes. (laughs) Yeah, you fucking toilet paper and fucking royalty-free music, you hoarders. Yeah, fucking dicks. All right, let's do this review. I got Better Call Saul to go watch. Oh, all right. Sorry. I didn't mean to disturb Better Call Saul. It's more important to me than your fucking life. Jesus. Wow, you really <laughs> love Better Call Saul. Uh, yes, that's what it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, the erotic nights of the living dead. We see we're in an asylum for the crazy. Uh, we see one guy. He's got a beard and he kind of just, uh, and it's our our dude, uh, the, the what you call a like, tall drink of water. George Eastman, yeah. Yeah, he's just kind of repeating things after himself as the doctors come out a female patient kind of slinks away and as she's walking a different crazy guy is following her she meets up though with our tall drink of water and they begin to have some rigorous sex so you know good for them can we just talk about george eastman's um pumping face in these sequences because there's a very specific style of fucking that bookends this film with him where the women undo his pants but his pants don't actually come off and then they hop up on him and then he basically just grabs a hold of them and just starts thrusting away and they're trying to hold on for dear life while he's just basically got a hold of their hips and is just gyrating and jackhammering them like a beast. He definitely has an intense O face. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Like, it makes me feel like I'm being sexually assaulted every time he makes that face. Like, I got really uncomfortable with that. Well, it doesn't help that he maintains eye contact with the camera. Right. It's like he's looking right at me going, this is for your entertainment, you sick fuck. How do you yeah, like he's looking it? Right into my, he's looking into my soul a little bit, and it, it's starting to get to me just a tad. Part of me was really turned on by it, and the other part of me was extremely disturbed. I, I, I could see that. Definitely. In other words, I had a raging erection, but I was terrified to use of it. Of course. Of course. Who wouldn't? Come on. <laughs> this is America. Hello. Also a clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... So anyway, uh, then we kind of go back and it's, we see, uh, we're on a boat now and this asshole keeps talking about fishing while our captain crazy there, uh, takes, uh, takes his woman, starts, uh, massaging her a bit. Okay. So this is supposed to be in the past. They don't actually say like in the past or anything, but it's supposed to yeah. be a flashback to when he wasn't crazy. But all of a sudden he's gone from a, a nut house to being on a boat. So. Just saying. The film is like this really weird, hazy, dream logic type Italian horror film that we've seen plenty of on this show. So he's either flashing back or there's a flashback to how he got into this asylum in the first place. Or we've just entered into George Eastman's character's fantasy world. I don't know which. Well, either way, he's uh, he's on a boat and he's kind of flirting with the wife of the couple there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's groping her and she's yeah. liking it. All the while, the fisherman guy, the husband keeps telling him that, you know... How to fish and shit, being a real jackass, not paying attention. Yeah, anyone who's seen cuckolding porn knows exactly what's happening here. And they're, like, getting teased and ready to actually want to watch what's about to happen. Where, you know, the husband's completely clueless and just kind of BSing and they're trying to hump quietly in the background. We've all seen it. We know what's going on. (laughs) Uh, Then we cut to a business meeting, and that is our first clip. Welcome back, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Since your last visit... I've managed to get through all the formalities. And here's the 20-year lease signed by the president himself. The island is all yours. Not exactly. I'm merely here to carry out a preliminary survey for the company I work for. I must admit I never imagined it would be such a simple matter for a foreign company to make this sort of arrangement with you. Our government is ready and willing to support any undertaking that will help build up our tourist industry. When do you intend to visit the island? As soon as possible. Will you be sending anyone with us? No, I'm afraid I can't spare anyone from the office right now. Oh, well, I guess I can manage alone. Thanks for everything. You're welcome, sir. All right, and as he leaves, the man behind the desk puts a strange little monkey statue on his desk. The camera makes sure you see it, so, you know, it must mean something by the end. 
you hope. Yeah, it's supposed to be a symbol of something, right? It, yeah, but at this point, I don't take anything for granted. I wrote it down, but I'm like, watch, I won't mention it again for the rest of the show. <laughs> now, <laughs> luckily, that's not the way this is. I'm just saying it's the way it's been before. Yeah. Well, that does happen where you think something's supposed to be important, particularly in a Joe D'Amato film, and then it never comes back into play at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then Captain Larry... I, Found out his name was Larry. Captain Larry, he uh, he's asked by the couple to join them for dinner, but uh, he can't. He has to uh, look after the boat. So then we cut to uh, the uh, business dude who was just having that meeting. He is now having a group shower time with a couple of ladies of the night. They, they religiously uh, wash him up pretty well. I don't know how deep into the sequence you're going to get, but before we blow past it, there's definitely something that we need to talk about that Go uh, ahead. our listener Kurt brought to my attention. We're not there yet. When the actual sex gets started, not just the shower sex stuff. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, then you noticed it too. <laughs> How could you not, right? Dead center of frame. How could you not notice what, yeah, what's living on this dude? <laughs> right, right. Um, I will say this. The the shower sex sequence thing where like they're scrubbing him up and they're both like really working the suds on him and stuff was yeah. actually pretty erotic. And then when the one chick made sure that she got his cock nice and clean and then started, you know, pushing rope into her mouth because it took him a while, which once it finally grew out and, and showed its full girth and stuff, you're like, oh, so that's why you're in porn <laughs> yeah yeah all right well i guess fine <laughs> bragger it took him a while i mean like if i had two while. if i had two women in the shower with me it would be standing salute like non-stop obviously it wouldn't be as impressive as what that guy was packing it wouldn't be as impressive nor would it last as long <laughs> yeah because i had two women in the shower with me i would have been done before they even touched me <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> been like, all right, guys. Well, that was great. <laughs> Have a good one. Mm, who wants a sandwich? I need a Gatorade. All right, let's get to the part uh, that we're both wanting to talk about and be disgusted by. <laughs> then it cuts to we're like out in a village area, and a guy comes up to an older man. He says they have spotted him or it, and that it's on the shore. The man says he knows how to handle this, and he goes to set up almost like a uh, another little monkey statue with like these candles around it. It's the same statue. It's the same design, at yeah. least. Yeah. Yep. While trying to light the candles, a person comes from behind him and bites out his throat, killing him. Weird sort of like almost death shroudy style zombie, and he's definitely walking like a zombie, but it just yeah. looks like they didn't have the money to do zombie makeup, so they just decided to wrap them in like these weird death shrouds. Uh, it's, yeah, that's... It's similar to like Plague of the Zombies, how they did the death shrouds for them, but they actually did really amazing makeup in Plague of the Zombies to go along with yeah. those death shrouds. Uh, then we cut to our, uh, fishing captain is, uh, doing some gambling. He, he, oh, he wins some cards and then leaves. Uh, then now we cut to the scene where we're talking about the dude has all sorts of full on sex with the two ladies. Uh, go ahead. Okay. At one point, he plops on his back and then makes the ladies do all the work on him. And the camera prominently puts, with the rule of thirds, his junk dead center of frame. And this man has what appears to be either a copious amount of skin tags or warts hanging off that nutsack. And it's right in frame. And every time one of them moves his junk in any way, shape, or form, whether they're riding him or blowing him, the skin tags pop up and say hi or warts or whatever they are and point directly out. And if I were both of the women in this movie and I saw those things, I would be like, what the fuck is that before I would even go anywhere near it? Yeah, not back in these times. They didn't care. Yeah, but are, are those warts or are those skin tags? What the fuck are those I think they're skin things? tags. I don't think they're warts. I, I mean, I can't be sure. I don't think they're warts. Right. But I don't think they're skin tags either because it looks like they're like pus. Pus? You thought they were postulates? Like pus filled something on his balls. Right, so it's either a socially transmitted disease or a sexually transmitted disease of some sort growing off that nutsack, or... Or something else, but either way, he should probably go see a doctor. Okay, best case scenario, they're just skin tags and they need to be removed, which having a skin tag cut off your nutsack would probably be, like, the most painful thing in the world. Yeah, so I can see why he's say... left with them, just left them there, right? Yeah. <laughs> But, like, we don't ever have to see this warty slash skin tagged nut sack again after the sequence, thankfully, even though this guy is putting his dick in literally everything on yeah, screen. Yeah, no matter what happens, man, he's uh, he's trying to fuck it. Yeah, 
like literally just about anything and everything. So whatever that is, if that is some kind of like pus filled postulate, weird thing hanging off his nutsack, he's spreading that filth around to everybody. This is true. You're spitting out truth facts. And this is, uh, this is kids. This is how STD spread. I'm just telling you. <laughs> right now, the next thing that I absolutely have to talk about, and I hope you put it in your clip is what he says whenever the ladies leave the room. I, I didn't, I didn't get that in a clip. I oh. wish I did. And I will get to that. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, uh, yeah, and then we cut to more of the captain playing poker and shit. And I'm sorry, when I said the captain was playing poker before, uh, what I meant to say was the fishing guy, the husband, was gambling. And the wife left, uh, you know, while he gambled. Then, after Puss, uh, Ballsack dude, uh, gets done having sex with the two hookers, um, the captain, then we see him playing poker, and he leaves. Then, uh... Sales guy, he's talking to the two women, and he asks if he would like to go to Cat Island with him. Uh, that's when they run away, and uh, yeah, he runs out and says, hey, you dumb whores, you forgot your money. Clip. <laughs> uh, that's not so bad. I'd rather use it out of the movie because it's a lot funnier the way the guy says it in the movie. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, you should <laughs> definitely pull that from the movie. Wait a minute, you dumb whores, you forgot your money. I feel like somebody else, like I think maybe Bill from Outside the Cinema has used that before. I feel like I've heard that clip on yeah. Outside the Cinema before because it's just so fucking funny. The way he says it, he just sounds like this, like, cootie old prospector, the way the line delivery is. He's like, hey, you dumb whores, you forgot your money. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and then, out of nowhere, because this guy just had a threesome, of course, another beautiful lady sees him while he's yelling at the dumb whores who lost your money, and she's instantly attracted to him. Well, yeah, I don't know if you knew this or not, Matt, but a man who has to pay women to have sex with him is automatically super attractive to the nearest woman who who realizes he just had sex and possibly has warts on his nutsack. I mean, I just had sex, so it doesn't matter, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is um, possibly the biggest stretch of a plot that we've ever seen in any I've, of these adult-oriented I've films. Ever seen in any adult-oriented film. <laughs> I mean, even if you just mention hookers, like even if you just mention it, sex work. Most regular women usually... will be like, we're done. <laughs> yeah. We're done here. Yeah. And if you shout into the hallway, you dumb whores, you forgot your money, chances are every woman around you is going to be upset that you just use the term whore, let alone that you patronize a sex worker. And by the way, let's make it to this. No condom with two hookers from a different country than you're from. So I'm just saying. Right, right. With the warty nutsack clip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I mean, that's probably how you got the warty nutsack. I'm guessing all of this clips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is just clip central. Um, anyway, the woman wants to have a drink with him. And uh, he, of course, agrees because this guy is just out to fuck everything. Well, yeah. The uh, captain is back on his boat. And so is that other dude's wife. And then they fuck. So good for you, Captain Larry. George Eastman is such a huge man that every one of these ladies that he gets with, they look like tiny, tiny people. It's just like, well, especially look, this one, like looks young anyway. This one kind of made me uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Like, like she's honest. way too tiny and it's, and she looks way too young. I was just like, Oh yeah, this was a real uncomfortable watch. Like for a minute there, I was like getting ready to be like, should I be on an FBI watch list for buying this Blu-ray <laughs> or something? What's going uh, on here? I was about to, I was about to message you say, did you get us on another list? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, she's of some legal age, but at least the sex that her and George Eastman are having, it's not full hardcore penetrative sex on screen. The, the, so, no, this is just uh, the softness here. This is the softness. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I don't want to see George Eastman whip out his third leg and violate something. I'm, I'm already terrified enough of that man. I don't need to see what kind of spit roast situation he has going on when he's actually having sex. And more than that, I just I just don't really need, you know, to to be reminded how how inadequate I am. I, I don't need that reminder constantly. Well, I was so, trying to speak that very more, much more delicately about my own inadequacies yeah. that, that I may or may not feel. But, I mean, if you just want to come right out and say it, sure. Well, I kind of fucking do. I'm pissed off about it. <laughs> not happy. <laughs> You're like one divorce away from an incel. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've got a bad time going. I can never be an incel either. I just, because I, I would go on the internet complaining. I just, I, I just, I'd be in my basement just sad all the time. That's it. <laughs> Just, it's just sad, <laughs> crying. That's the best kind of incel, where you just keep yeah. it to yourself and shut the fuck up. Exactly. You don't bother anybody with your fucking problems. You just deal with it. Right. I'm ugly. Fuck. Okay, fine. Uh, Clip. 
<laughs> yep. Trust me, that was going to be a lot worse of a clip, and I stopped myself. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's all like, I'm highly unfuckable. God damn it. <laughs> I was going to say something even worse than that, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> oh, well, mine's a better clip anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, after they get done boning, the business guy, his name's John, apparently, and he talks with the new lady. Uh, she says that she left an old man in his yacht who had kept pursuing her. So she just was like, okay, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll do this then. And, uh, but she said she, you know, he was boring. So she got out of there. Uh, after talking a little bit more, uh, he goes down on her. So good job, buddy. It's another thing too. During that sex sequence, he's going down on hookers that he bought. He's giving, he's a giver. I right. mean, say what you want, but I mean, he's giving a lot of things. Uh, STDs are one of them, but he's also <laughs> giving orgasms. That's he's, nice. He's, he's receiving a lot of STDs while he's giving a lot of STDs. I just, I'm sorry, but if you are the patron for sexual favors, t- you'd have to like really love giving head to want to give head to a prostitute that you are paying for, right? I mean, like that would have yeah. to be the thing that you would be like the most into is, yeah, you but, know, to, to do that. Like I, maybe I'm just a selfish lover but i just don't like if i'm paying for it why am i doing that you know i should be receiving mm-hmm. oral not I, giving <laughs> if i'm paying you know you think if you're paying for it yeah you, that's supposed to be part of part of the deal <laughs> what i mean what is the normal thing everyone says you know you don't pay uh, a prostitute for sex you pay them to leave i believe that's the charlie sheen way of putting it yes yeah but i also think it's probably you know, so you, you you pay them so you don't have to go down on them <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You don't have to reciprocate la passion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, the next day, the wife's leaving the boat, and they see a zombie in the water, so Larry kills it. As they take the body away, the cops tell him they did nothing wrong but to stop by the station later. It's autopsy time, and two of the orderlies warn the doctor to perform the autopsy that these creatures don't go down as easily as uh, that, you know, as easily as it was put down. And the doctor says it's nothing and a dead is dead. And as he's doing the autopsy, the zombie gets up and kills him. So there yeah. you go. Bites him in the neck. And then all the things that that guy kills get up and kill. We, we've seen this before. We know where this goes. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we know the formula on this one. Uh, <laughs> it's like 14 days that they're dead before they get back up, though. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the next day, uh, John and Fiona meet Larry at his boat, and that is our next clip. Uh, Mr. O'Hara, we haven't actually met each other. Yeah, I realized that when I heard you call me Mr. My name's John Wilson. I'm an architect. I hear you rent your boat. I'd like to hire it for a couple of days. Right, but it's not cheap. That's not important. What matters is that you're the best sailor around. You get good information. Tell me, when did you plan to leave? Tomorrow, early in the morning. Bringing the wife with you? This is not my wife, but she will sail with us. Okay. You want me to look after the provisioning? Yes, you know what to buy. I want you to take us to a place called Cat Island. Do you know it? Yeah, I sure do. And I'm afraid that'll make things a little difficult. My deckhand will refuse to sail with us. Why? Well, the people here are very simple folk. And there are uh, a lot of stories about that island. What kind of stories? A legend about zombies led by a cat. Thought up by the natives to fool the tourists, I guess. Maybe. But a lot of legends are based on fact. Too bad you didn't have a chance to see what I saw earlier today. Unbelievable. You can spin the yarn at sea. Here's an advance to cover the provisions. You get the balance when we return. See you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right. So Nermy and the Dead led by a cat. So uh, we then cut to an island cemetery, and Laura Jemsner's there, standing there. And that is thanks, movie. Yeah, that's a big thank you movie for sure. Yeah. That, so now, now you know we're, we're, we're in real times now. Uh, <laughs> we're in the best of timelines. So then John and Fiona talk about the captain and uh, this trip they're taking. All the while, she's pretty much drying his dick after a shower. This guy gets so much attention paid to his cock by all these ladies. It's ridiculous. I'm mad about it too, man. Jelly uh, sees a bad look on us both, though, so let's just be careful. I mean, I know mine not, may not be as impressive as what this guy has, but it also has significantly less postulates, warts, and uh, skin tags. I have zero. Oh, oh, I was supposed to say, I noticed you didn't say any. Yeah. <laughs> I have well zero is significantly less than the seventy five that he's got yeah. hanging on just the right side of it. <laughs> zero is the right number. I'm telling you right now, it's the only right number. 
Uh, <laughs> when it comes to skin tags, postulates, and or any other sexually transmitted disease of a wart-like nature, zero is the perfect number to have upon your genitals. Z- zero's, zero's the number you want. That's uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, zero, zero or less. <laughs> zero or less. That's, um, that's highly important. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a that's a number one fact of you know people are gonna ask you and check your shit out. Joey's supposed to check out the quality of the turf before playing ball. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, so uh, anyway, then the uh, uh, the captain is sitting there. He watches a woman do a dance, and uh, I, I mean, I'm not gonna I be. Mean, Pardon okay. my French, but she fucks a champagne bottle. I, I, hang on, hang on. She doesn't exactly fuck the champagne bottle. This is an actual performance thing that I guess this particular lady could do. She did a live sex show. Her vaginal muscles were so strong, she could actually pop a cork of champagne with her vaginal muscles. She, I mean, but in a sense, she's still fucking a champagne bottle. Well, no, no, she rides it. She rides it first just to, like, really get it worked yeah. up and, like, to just as part... That's part of the show. Like, she is masturbating herself with that bottle but then she does cork it and we get to see that on screen where she pops the cork of the champagne and it simulates some um, ejaculation from you know that that's like a, it's a really good sex show that she's performing here and artistically speaking i found that quite entertaining yes but anyway like i said she still definitely fucked a champagne bottle and popped the popped its cork so that's nice all i have to say about this is if the muscles in her vagina are strong enough to pull a cork from a champagne bottle they'll take your dick right off your body man and make it feel really good while it's happening yeah yeah you'll you'll i mean it's gonna hurt but you're gonna like it uh anyway after that john and fiona fuck so good on them <laughs> we've kind of already uh, seen them fuck because she goes in the hotel room and fucks him and then she's fucking him again in the yeah in, in the boat um there's something that john does here i don't know if it's at this sequence or later on but the main character or our character of john that we've been following mr warty sack here um mr warty sack walks up and just shoves his dick into the face of this lady with his pants still on and expects her to do all the work to perform oral on him like this is not the way that he should be treating someone who's supposed to be like a girlfriend or a prospective lover i can see him acting like this towards a sex worker because you know it's implied that it's consent because he paid for it that she would just go ahead and do that and like maybe that's his kink to you know just kind of not necessarily be forceful but insistent like yeah that. i think although i don't think this is supposed to be a lover i think she's also been bought a bit and she makes mention of that later on in the movie so this guy's constantly paying everybody for sex yeah uh, this guy's constantly just buying people for sex or just for anything well, I mean, with a warty nut sack like that, you're going to have to. Pretty much. Hashtag wart sack. Hashtag skin tags on nut sack. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag get checked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Totally shit. But not yet. Social distance. <laughs> um, none of these people are practicing social distancing, by the way. We don't, um, we don't need to worry about it. It's not Corona time there. It's just Corona it's, time it's here. Not- because I mean, all, what everyone's doing there, it seems like that's how you get the coronavirus. Well, I believe that it originated in that warty nutsack. Prob- uh, you know what? I wouldn't doubt it. Um, so then we cut to Laura Gemser. She's just hanging out again. But, you know, hey, thank you. Um, I really dig this Saran wrap like dress thing that she's wearing. I think it really complements her skin tones. And I think she looks she really good She wears those it. a lot in a lot of her movies. Yeah, I've noticed. They look fucking amazing on her. That's why. Yeah. I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't disagree with her doing it. I'm just, I mean, that's probably why she wears a lot of them in her movies. Um, she rocks that shit hardcore. So anyway, um, as Laura Gemser, she must be doing something in her mind. Because at that point, John feels like someone's in the room watching him. Uh, and then we cut to a green glue is coming from Laura's hand as she keeps gripping it, almost digging into it. Then we cut to the captain, the dancer, uh, or as I call the captain and dancer bottle lover. And, uh, <laughs> they're having a drink and then the captain sees a black cat. It's a pretty kitty, but it doesn't bode well. No. Uh, Laura and Laura's walking around with an old man. Uh, they're talking. Uh, she says she sees them coming, and he said he will try and save them. Uh, then uh, the bros, uh, John and Captain Larry, are talking on the boat, and that is our next clip. Is she difficult to handle? Keep your eye right on the compass. The only things to worry about are sandbanks and currents that make you drift off your course. Probably less dangerous than driving a taxi. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Have you ever been to Cat Island? Yeah. I've sailed past without landing. What's it like? 
Oh, uh, they're pretty much alike, all these islands. I suppose we can use first names. Why not? Listen, Larry, have you ever had the sensation that someone is spying on you? The feeling that there are eyes watching all your movements? Take the wheel for a minute. Yep, so they're kind of talking there about what they're both feeling in this world right now. Every now and then you think they're kind of bonding, and then they fucking don't. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so we get some more sailing. Uh, Fiona is sunbathing nude. Thank you, movie, for all of these lovely nude ladies. Right. As the captain's kind of appreciating her, John reminds him that uh, she is not part of the contract. So, kind of a not-so-subtle way of saying, hey, you know, you be cool, dude, be cool. Yeah, that was uh, really weird how he basically was, like, looking her up and down, and the guy's like, hey, I bought and paid for her, so fuck off, is how he was saying yeah, it. pretty much, exactly. Um, while John and Fiona are getting all hot and bothered on the boat, kind of making out, Larry informs the two that the island is now in sight and that they will land in 24 hours. Laura and the old dude are talking. The old dude says he hopes that these people can save themselves. This is when he forces his you know, dick in her face and Fiona takes it out and starts blowing him all the while the Captain Larry's watching. So that's weird. Okay. I know that they did this here because they tried to establish it, that this was a thing that he got off on doing, but like, shouldn't he have done this with the ladies that were, maybe he did do that. And then they all hopped in the shower and they cut it out or something. I don't know. But like, I think we needed to see this, him doing something similar to this and like expecting to get head automatically this time. And then one time before it, because when he does it again, like what would be the normal reaction you would expect someone to do happens instead. Well, the normal reaction would be to punch him square in the dick for putting yeah. it in we're near the face. <laughs> I guess. More facts. You're saying a lot of good a lot of good facts here. Anyway, they come ashore, and that is our next clip. People used to live here. There was a great big fishing village. What happened to it? It was wiped out, literally destroyed. First there was an earthquake, then an epidemic. There was nothing left afterward. You mean everyone died? That's right. And they're all buried here. The only building left is an old storehouse. I think it's over that way. They gave me an old map of the island. Here it is. It's a fabulous location. We'll put the hydrofoil dock over there and the central block of the hotel here with bungalows scattered all around. Let's see, according to the map, the old cemetery should be right over there. Let's go have a look. Mm, marvelous. Yes, here we are. This is it. I wonder how long it is since anyone's put flowers on these graves. All right. Uh, so, there, as, you know, she's at least trying to you know, bring up the fact that, you know, they are surrounded by the dead. Uh, but uh, John just can't seem to care because he doesn't really give a shit about anything, not even the respect for the dead. We're a lie in there. He goes through that cemetery, still planning all the things and where they'll put the hotel and shit. And that's when we see Laura and the old man come over. And that is our next clip. They told us the island was uninhabited. Yes, sir. That is right. We live here alone, my granddaughter and I, alone with the dead. Well, Grand Aaron, we're building the largest, most fabulous hotel of the archipelago here. You know what that means? Uh, it means a mint of money for everybody, including you and the girl. What do I need money for? Come on, you know the answer to that. Stop kidding. It would mean you and your so-called granddaughter could live it up a little before you join your dead friends. No, no. Come away. Not a bad-looking piece, is she? Listen... If you want my advice, I wouldn't treat them like that. I'm not paying you for advice, Larry. Come on. Just when I thought I couldn't hate this venture capitalist piece of shit any more than I already do, this scene happens and oh, big shock, he's a fucking racist. Exactly. What a fucking dick. Oh, he's wow. so fucking horrible. Like, I, I get what they're trying to drive home here, and I get that they're overproving the point, but maybe I'm just a little sensitive to the wasting of resources to try and make money and the loss of concern about human life, all in the interest of making more money because of recent events in our world. But, like, this guy really irked me watching it right at this oh, scene. Yeah. And again, it's a whole money can buy me anything fucking attitude. Right. It's not going to be able to buy your way out of a curse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or a disease. You can't oh. buy your way out of a disease. Yeah, I hate... Oh, my God. This guy was such a jackass. Um. So, anyway... uh. At the beach, uh, Fiona starts kind of enticing Larry a little bit, but then they hear loud, booming, rumbling noises, and they all decide to head back to the boat. 
on the uh, boat, Fiona is dilling herself uh, while Larry watches. So, you know, there you go. Some more just Larry just checking things out, drinking beer. <laughs> this dude is such a fucking voyeur. I think his character is just basically like supposed to be there for us to enjoy watching ladies pleasure themselves. Like he's the camera for us in this case. Yeah, he's us. That's that's how this is. <laughs> Right, only he's also gigantic, which we aren't. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's true. <laughs> We're supposed to identify with him, but it's hard because he is this, you know, uh, <laughs> tall drink of water while you and I are uh, under the bridge trolls. So, <laughs> Oh, I'm not an under the bridge troll. I mean, you're a hideous fucking chud, but I'm at least good looking. Yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to let you have it because, you know. Well, and- Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It has nothing to do with the fact that, like, you can't disprove me calling you a hideous chud by showing people what you actually look like because you're a hideous chud. Yeah, I am a hideous chud. I mean, I, I'm not denying that I'm not a hideous chud. You're just in denial about how attractive I actually am. That's, I don't think it's a denial. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty based on fact there. Um, I, I'm happy you're not attracted to me, Matt. I truly am. You just I, have I to would've... accept the fact that I am a beautiful man. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say to that because it's 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 wrong on so many levels that that was that was like watching a Trump speech. Anyway, <laughs> wow, fuck off with that right there. <laughs> Just fucking around. Uh, anyway, uh, we see that the pictures John had been taking they show the old man, but not Laura. Dun dun dun. Yeah, right, Larry dismisses this as just John doesn't know how to do his fucking job, which, you know, that's a pretty safe assumption. Uh, well, uh, Enin, Fiona talks about this cat she saw on the island. Both the men kind of get up and leave the room as that kind of, you know, triggers them a bit. So, uh, they, uh, head back on the island and the boys go to measure a few things while Fiona goes to lay out and get some sun. Uh, the boys start finding cat tracks And John is blaming the old man, thinking the the old man is setting things up. Right. Again, xenophobia or whatever you want to put it. Like, he's got this whole conquistador thing where he's going to take over this island. And he thinks he's trying to be scared off. So he's not going to walk away from business because you never walk away from an investment in real estate, Matt. No, never. Never. You get the job done so you make more money, apparently. Laura comes over. So... Thank you, movie. And finds Fiona. And uh, we get some hot woman-on-woman action there. Yeah, best part of the movie. Yeah, this is, definitely. Thank you, movie. This is a thank you, movie, and a five-star thank you, movie. Thank you, movie. Now, I've um, seen I've seen some other films starring Laura Jemsner where she gets down and dirty with some other ladies, but they don't show quite as close up of the actual touching of the other person's genitalia. And I was under the impression that Laura Jemsner never really did anything all that hardcore, but... This sequence, she's um, I mean, she's double clicking the mouse for that lady, right? I'm not I, yeah, wrong. Yeah, I think this is about as close as she gets to doing that kind of stuff. Of all the films that you've seen starring Laura Jemsner or that Laura Jemsner is in, have you seen anything more hardcore than that? Because that's about as hardcore as I remember seeing in anything else too. Yeah, same. No, that's about as as hardcore as it gets. And, yeah, and it's not even really like a full fledged actual double clicking of the mouse. You just kind of like it's it's hinted at where she's almost hovering kind of kind of deal. Which I'm not saying that like I expect this sort of thing it's just interesting that her star power was strong enough that even in a film like this she didn't have to do more than just be there and and look attractive and act you know she didn't have to actually right? participate in the hardcore stuff or wasn't pressured into it basically that that is true uh i, I think she had enough star power on that to kind of just say no this is what i'll do and you want me in your movie anyway yeah because there's definitely something about her you cannot look away from her she is just so striking that she demands yeah, your I, attention every time she's on like screen. i said man it's, it's one of the reasons she's one of the first kind of women who was like hey what's this about what's going on here <laughs> What's right. happening? Right. What's well, happening there, to me? <laughs> there's there's plenty of people out there like that that almost have like this sparkle to them where as soon as you see them, like something just shines in your eye and like they become something that you become transfixed with. Uh, for you, it's Laura Gemser, and I cannot argue that point at all. I definitely see it. And, you know, for me, it's Edgewood Fennec. <laughs> I'm absolutely yeah. enthralled every time she's on screen. I'm also absolutely enthralled every time Laura Gemser's on screen as well. So I totally get where you're coming from with that. Yeah, right. While talking about uh, the sound they heard the other day, Larry sees Laura looking at him. Uh, Larry tells John he's going to go looking for the old man. 
So he goes looking and he finds him and he accuses him of making the rumble noises. The old man instead gives him that same little monkey statue that we saw in the beginning of the movie and tells it to keep it with him. Yeah, is this thing a curse or is it like a talisman that's no. supposed to ward off and protect? It's supposed to protect. Okay. So Larry then finds Laura. She's swimming nude, of course. Thank you, movie. And he asks her about the statue and that is our next clip. I was given this by your grandfather. Tell me what it's for. Why was I given it? He knows what is right. He gave it to you because you are honest with us. He will not hurt you. And they will not hurt you. Don't be frightened. Why should I be frightened? There's only the two of you living here. All those stories they tell are crazy. Don't lose that charm. It can save you. Hey, wake up. I just had the funniest dream. It was just as if that girl were with me. What girl was that? That native girl. It was as if she were lying here. We have to wait here for Larry. He's going to talk to the old man. I hope he can get some sense out of him. Ah, there he is. You took your time. How'd you make out with the old codger? Let's get back to the boat. I'm beginning to get fed up with this trip and with this damned island. I've had enough of it. Come on, let's go. Yeah, but did you talk to the old cuss or not? Yeah, I talked to him. And I'm coming around to the idea that what they've been saying about this place is true. Oh, it's just a pile of bullshit. Charming. Okay, so she thinks it's a dream that she had sex with Laura Gemsner? Yeah, I think so. Definitely, yeah. Okay, so I know that uh, there's some ethereal, spiritual, like, uh, weird haunting stuff going on here where Laura Gemser may or may not be a spirit. So is the woman just saying she had a dream, or did she actually have sex and just try to play it off as a dream with the spirit? If that's a haunting, then sign me up. Yeah, like that and Ray's dream about being haunted in uh, Ghostbusters. I'll, I'll take them both. All of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I'm not gonna, anybody has a problem with that, they, they need to get checked out. Uh <laughs> Matt says it's not necrophilia if it's a spirit. That's right. It's not. It's it's all in your mind. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, as they leave, uh, a cat is watching them. Black cat, no less. And then we see Larry in the boat is loading up a gun. Uh, John sees in pictures that the tombstones that they had taken pictures of the day before were moved today. Uh, and there were funny looking tracks next to each of them. They all decide to leave, but now the boat won't start and there is no wind, so they can't sail away. Uh oh. Yep. Uh oh. Dun dun dun. Uh, we see the old man kind of just sitting there and lightning striking, so bad shit's about to happen. Uh, then later on that night, Larry pretty much watches John fuck Fiona. And then he decides to leave for land. He's had enough. But he needs to get some himself. Right. Uh, and he finds Laura in the water and then they start fucking. But as they are fucking, he looks up and he sees the dead are starting to come out onto the beach. Uh, while boning, he uh, takes the dead are just standing there staring at him while they're boning, too. So even the dead are a little bit voyeuristic. Uh, as he stares at them, he looks down and Laura has disappeared. He decides to hold up the little statue given to him and the dead turn away and return inland if you are receiving sex from laura gemsner or the character that's being played by laura gemsner and you're surrounded by zombies and she seems unconcerned and doesn't stop do you ask her to stop or do you risk your life and mortal soul to continue having sex with someone like laura gemsner b option b a b it's b <laughs> option b <laughs> yeah i'm so hardwired to b that a is not even an option in that case i didn't even hear what option a was but option b sounded best the consequences be damned i'm having sex with laura Gemster. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't care what's coming. Yeah, B. It's B. It's definitely it's B. <laughs> Solid B. It's, always B. It's, it's, it's always B. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're so male. <laughs> we are. We? We're just dudes. And so, that's uh, that's how praying mantises have sex, kids. They die. Yeah, for exactly. It. That's why because they know. Larry then passes out. The next day the other two find him, and he said he was walking around and he must have tripped and hit his head. Uh, Larry and Fiona decide to go back to the boat as John has things to do. Uh, John finds Laura, and then they meet with the old man, and that is our next clip. One of the strangers is here with me. He wants you to explain why all those curious things are happening. I want them to stop, and I'll pay for your help. I suppose you're some kind of native witch doctor or magician. 
Well, you've had your fun playing your clever tricks on us, but it's time to stop because we're leaving. Here, for booze. You are stubborn and foolish, like a selfish child. And I cannot help you. Money will not buy life. It is of no use to me. No, by now there is nothing I can do for you. You said that old bastard could help me. Yet I could hardly understand his goddamn mumbling. It's difficult to appreciate wisdom. And you don't even begin to. Is he your father? No. Yet I do love him. You're pretty. More. You're beautiful. No. Not during the day. I like it by moonlight. I'll wait for you tonight. Well, that's a setup if I've ever heard one. Yeah, I don't trust what she's got going on here. And this guy's basically asking for something bad to happen. He basically just came right out and said a bunch of racist shit to the guy trying to get him to help. He's like, you're like a witch doctor, right? What (laughs) what indication has this guy said that he's like a witch doctor in any way, shape, or form? I mean, he's just basically cobbling together whatever thought process he can to justify. And then he's automatically throwing money at the problem again. Like, I'll pay you for your time. And the guy He's like, look, money means nothing to me and I can't help you, but I'll pay you. I'll pay you handsomely. Uh, money means nothing to me. I can't help you. Yeah. Well, that's because that's the only thing he understands is that to uh, throw money someplace. So, um, <laughs> it's so irritating, man. Yeah. Fucking capitalists. It, oh, I fucking hate it. Uh, she leaves and he goes to her, but then he sees that she's vanished. Nowhere to be found. Uh, we cut back to being on the boat and the engine is fine. Uh, and everything should be working, but it won't turn on. At that point, Larry calls for the Coast Guard for a pickup. We cut to some dinner time chatting, and that is our next clip. I already spoke to the Coast Guard. They should be on their way by now. The best boat in the port, they told me. What would have happened if I'd picked the worst? John was luckier with his shore trip than you. He had a nice talk with the old guy and the girl, but he didn't fall and get himself scratched up like you. Larry likes to do things the hard way to show off his manliness, a punch on the nose, and there you are, a new conquest. It's better than running around waving a lousy checkbook, isn't it? Asking girls what they charge. Not just girls, I bought you. Oh, come on, Larry. Don't let him bother you. The main thing we don't need is a fistfight to end this delightful cruise. Forget it. Relax and tell me something about yourself. I'm curious to know you better. And that's why I'm living like this. If I'd only lost that poker hand, I would have gone back home. But I won it, and so I became the skipper of this boat. What's that funny noise? It's just the dinghy. You don't have to look. Yeah, it was the dinghy. It was bumping the hull. John must have taken it to go ashore, and then it drifted back on the tide. I tied it up. It'll be safe now. But aren't you worried about poor John? What's there to worry about? He won't be able to get back from shore and we're all alone. Bow chicka bow wow. And I noted this and they fuck. <laughs> okay, so Larry tells John you, you have to pay for all the sex. You just automatically ask a woman how much she wants. And he's like, yeah, well, I bought you, didn't I? Basically calling him a hooker or, or more or less. Yeah. And then Uh he disappears, so the first thing that Larry does is fuck John's woman. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, And and it's something that's been building for a while with these two, so it's... (laughs) Yeah, he's got raw animal magnetism that apparently every woman that's within six feet of him has coronavirus sex with him. Yes, that is is a fact. I think these are, these, yeah, it doesn't matter what he's got, uh, no woman's going to practice social distancing with this guy. (laughs) Or safe sex, because sex with this man is not safe on any level, because he does the thing again where he like has a hold of her and he just starts grabbing onto her hips and banging her so heavy and hard that she has to hold on to whatever she can get a hold of to not fly away from him. Yeah, exactly. Uh... <laughs> I feel like he's causing a spinal injury with every thrust watching him fuck on this film. Right? Jesus Christ. Uh <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is I need to learn how to do that. <laughs> no, don't. I don't. I don't think they actually enjoy that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Gentle, not gentle. Rough. <laughs> uh, John finds as he's walking around. John finds a little statue surrounded by candles. 
Um, uh, he picks it up and throws it down, and it turns into a black cat that attacks him. Yeah, what the fuck? As, they, they never set this up that the cat was spiritual or anything. They just kind of had it appear, and then they had it do this, and then that's it. We never see the cat again. Yeah, man, that's life. That's how it just works. I don't know why. What, what's your problem there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> The cat was fucking adorable, and I wanted it on screen more. Okay, I get that. I get that. That's a that's a true. Okay, all right, that's fine. Because that ta- cat was adorable. So, uh, <laughs> as he uh, backtracks, he is attacked by the dead. He gouges one's face completely off. He cuts another one's head off, but it still bites at his ankles. He pushes his way out of the little shack he's in, and he finds Laura in the graveyard. She makes like she's going to go ahead and give him a blowy, but then bikes his dick completely off. This is the sequence I was talking about where this pays off. He walks up, and basically she's like sitting down, and he just throws his junk right in her face with his pants still on. She takes it out and starts performing oral on him, but takes a big old fucking bite. Yeah. Now, we don't actually see anything enter Laura Gemsner's mouth because, as we had mentioned before, she doesn't do that hardcore thing. And they have like a replica baked dick thing that like is just basically a sausage with fake blood on it. But it looks realistic enough, and she sells it when she pulls her mouth away that she actually just bit that off and it's just holding it in her mouth and the sequence actually works pretty well and it's a great fucking payoff because that's exactly what I wanted to have happen to this guy when he shoved his cock into the other girl's face. I wanted her to either punch him in the junk or bite it, you know, to teach him a lesson. Yeah, 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 but number one, owie. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, that- as as a man who is terrified of emasculation, because I believe all men are, ouch. Yeah. Well, also, I just don't want things bitten off of me. Not even so much like I, I'd be that way if it was a finger. Like I just don't want pieces of me bitten off of me. All right, we'll just have to agree to disagree on that. Okay then. Uh- <laughs> Not me. I I just want pieces bitten off of you. That's my fetish. Oh, that's uh, I'm gonna kink shame you for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I just definitely... want to watch you be eaten alive. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I'm gonna kink shame you on that one. That's definitely a kink shaming right there. <laughs> Not not people uh, in general, just specifically you, Matt. I want to watch I'm you. I'm kink shaming apart. you. Yeah, I, and that's why I'm the only person who gets to kink shame you because of that. Fair enough. I, I, I accept it. <laughs> the other two hear the rumbling again, and they decide to leave to go find John. Um, as uh, we cut to John being eaten alive by zombies. Uh, then we go, uh, Larry, as he's going around with his gun, can't find the statue that's in his pockets. Now we get a scene of the dead rising from the graves. They find the graves and they find Laura. Larry walks up to her and that is our next clip. What have you done with our friend? Where is he? Now I understand why no one ever wants to come to this island. I didn't listen to them when they warned me. I didn't want to believe what they said and I was mistaken. But now, please, I beg you, let us leave here in peace. You still have a chance to save yourself. The old man gave the charm to you, but not to your foolish friend. He was stubborn and presumptuous. He thought he could use his money to buy everything and everyone. He could not understand that money and presumption do not exist here. We only want one thing, to be left alone. Tell me where he is now. Everything we've been saying actually just played out right there. Money means nothing here. They just want to be left alone. And him being a developer and thinking that he can throw money around is the exact opposite of what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Also, probably the reason why he's dead now. The reason that he's dead is because he tried to put his dick in Laura Jemsner's face without permission. And that's right. That's that's an automatic death. And, and you don't do that in front of me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a zombie, but I guarantee you, if I were one and that were to happen, I would am- automatically call up my friends to devour that man alive for what he just did to Laura Jemsner. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, then we see John's zombie come stumbling out. Larry shoots him in the head, putting him out of his misery. They missed an opportunity. John's zombie should have had very bloody pants. Yeah, something like that. Or no pants on. Or, or like uh, a little bit of a stump hanging out of very bloody pants. Like they should have really yeah. sold the, the sleaze of that. Yeah. Uh, they run from the other zombies and they get back to the boat. Uh, but the dead start coming out of the water. Before they can get on there. They stop to rest for a moment, but damn, those damn zombies keep showing up. That's what they do, Matt. They're pesky and they get in your way. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. They run again, shooting some zombies as they go. 
Uh, Zs start coming from everywhere, even dropping from trees. As they're resting, one rises up right next to him and takes his gun. We need to talk about that real quick. The zombies coming up out of the sand, um, some of the sequences, it works better than others. You can tell that they're very shallowly buried, but the ones that work the best are when it's like a mound of sand and then they slowly come up out of the mound. There's several shots that are really quite well done and pretty excellent. But some of these other ones where they're supposed to be a gem scare, the dropping out of the trees works better than them popping out of the ground because the sand goes flying and then you can tell the person in the zombie outfit has got it all in their fucking mouth and eyes and yeah. they're, they're not able to sell that they're, you know, back from the dead to kill. I did like the one who grabbed the gun, though. That one was good, that yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, but... That was a good one. That Because that one came out slow and they weren't paying attention when he had the gun dropped to the ground and yeah. then it grabbed the gun before he could get a hold of it, you know, where its hand came out first. That was really well done. Yeah, I thought that was a really good one. Um, they take shelter in that little in a little old storehouse. Uh, they are surrounded and they light a torch and hold uh, hold them back and light some on fire. Larry then finally finds and grabs a sta- the one of the little statues and the dead just start to fall. That was really interesting. Like he had a statue. Yeah. It was the thing that marked him and I believe that John stole Larry's statue and that's why it happened the way it did where he wasn't it's protected. It's possible, yeah. But then he got a hold of one and he was protected again. Yeah. Uh the next morning uh they both are on the beach. And they're waking up on there, and the chopper is there from the Coast Guard. They both maniacally start laughing, and then they just start boning. Um, and we're back to that book ending thing that we were talking about earlier, yep. where he's thrusting so hard he looks like he's breaking her back, and she's just exactly. holding on for dear life. Uh, well, we're back at the hospital now, and the orderlies separate the two crazies as they can't stop fucking one another. They also intercede on a guy that's jerking off, too. Yes. Yeah. One of the other crazies is jerking off as well. So who followed her as she went looking for him in the beginning? Two orderlies are taking Larry away, and that is our final clip. <laughs> Come on, Larry, take it easy. Why don't you relax and enjoy yourself? After all, if they hadn't put you in here, they would have hanged you. You really think he shot that guy and ate him? Why, sure. It was either him or his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. she's too cute. I can't believe a pretty little piece like that could have done such a thing. Well, it was one of them, because there was only three people on the island. Them and that old blind man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> only three. And roll credits. Well... This was a definite uneven mess of a film, but still really kind of enjoyable. I didn't mind it, especially the end when it was only the three, like no evidence of the zombies or anything like that. So, you know, the other two get blamed. I liked it. This is a perfect example of a Joe D'Amato film, but um, Joe D'Amato and Bruno Mattei work together. But like, if you take out the pornographic elements of this film and just have this story, that's just them going to the island and some of the other stuff, and it's like super shorter, that's a Bruno Mattei film that he then pads out with a bunch of other stuff he stole from like aliens or something. And Bruno Mattei totally stole this movie. Like his Island of the Dead that we covered not too long ago is pretty much this fucking movie. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. They padded it out with like some pornographic elements that you don't necessarily need to be in there. I've seen a 90 minute version of this without all that stuff in it. That's just like some sex, but not actual hardcore sex that's involved. Uh And and then like some of the story, which is still pretty enjoyable as well. This is the full, complete uncut version that we did for this film. I once again had to commit Code Red to get it. And we've already talked about Code Red. So, um, you know, if it's the only way that I can get a hold of a print of a film, then I guess I'm going to have to commit Code Red. (laughs) That's that, that's just how it has to happen sometimes. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I did. I enjoyed the film. There's plenty of moments where it really just kind of is slow and plodding and you really feel it. And I hate to say it, but most of that was involving the sexual aspects of the film because the zombie stuff moves along in a grip. They clearly were just padding out the film with porn. And if you want to do something that's at least somewhat entertaining, I guess padding your film out with hardcore sex, that'll do it. Yeah. No, yeah, that's exactly. I mean, hey, if you if you're going to pad out the film, I'd rather have that than a bunch of running. Yeah. And I I know that this was shot pretty much back to back with another Damato film that he made around this time called Porno Holocaust. I don't know if Jemsner is in that one or not, but... Okay. They pretty much said, I, I kind of read about that, and they pretty much said that this movie used the same sets, same clothes, same actors, same everything. Yeah, that sounds very much like Joe D'Amato slash uh, Bruno Mattei style thing. So why do I keep bringing up Bruno Mattei, Matt? Because we have four weeks left, five at the most, before May Mattei hits. 
oh, come on, man. We're already in quarantine. Really? Do we have to? Yes. And the best part of it is we may be out of quarantine by the time May Matei hits, so the pain will be even more worse. Oh, man. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. We, if we're still in quarantine, can we just die? <laughs> I mean, that's always an option, but then I got to find a new co-host to torture. All right. So I, I got nothing really else to add about the film. I mean, it's about two hours. Um, some of that is hardcore pornography. Some of that is softcore pornography. It's real uneven. It's kind of a mess of a film, but overall, it's still pretty entertaining. I mean, it's worth a watch and you don't necessarily need the hardcore pornography, but it certainly helps. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. But yeah, I thought it was a fun movie. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I was just kind of disappointed in it. I think I was hoping for more Laura Jemsner as a treat, but yeah, much like Cats and Salami, we only got a little Laura Jemsner as a treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is what it is. We did, we got a lot more Laura Jemsner the week before, so we can be happy about that. Yeah, and that movie, I mean, if we would have watched the movies in reverse, if we would have done this movie and then Emmanuel and the Deadly Black Cobra, I think I would have been a lot more jazzed about watching this movie than what I am. But Yeah, um, because that movie was just, that the, 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 the Emmanuel and the Black Cobra was a lot better of a movie. Yeah, I, I, shockingly so. Yeah, it was very poignant and everything, so... Um, but yeah. we're not reviewing that film. We're reviewing Erotic Nights. Yeah, we already we already did that film. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of things that we've already done, we're going to take another break here. We're going to play the promo for a podcast that just launched, and I'm really trying to give a big push to because which is my boy. Have a little bit more music that fits along with Erotic Nights of the Living Dead, and when we come back, we'll do some psyop news. <laughs> As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. So maybe that music doesn't really fit, but it's still rocking. It's still fun. It's still upbeat. And it's the best I can fucking do when I have to keep it all royalty free. Fucking A, man. Fucking A. <laughs> it is what it is. But we'll make it all better with the Psyops. from Robert Ward. Yeah, our field reporter at this point, right? <laughs> yeah. Boober Eats. Strippers launched coronavirus food delivery service called Boober Eats to help vulnerable people in self-isolation. Mm, tears are good lube. Yeah, this comes from the sun. Uh, strippers have launched a food delivery service called Boober Eats, which aims to help bring people food who are in self-isolation. The rock dancers were left with no business after their strip club, The Lucky Devil in Oregon, closed its doors due to, people to so due to people social distancing themselves amid the coronavirus crisis. Circle jerk! Circle jerk! The owner of the club, Sean Bolden, came up with the idea of a food delivery service as a joke, but after a huge amount of interest on Facebook, decided to launch the service. I have a He's ragey direction. 
<laughs> he said, I originally did it at first as a joke, and it got 150 shares of Facebook. It's like nothing we've ever had before. So I was like, well, why don't we try to do this? Oh, Bolden no told job should be teethy. <laughs> why Bolden told to Willamette Swimitals? Week that the club will be offering its full menu outside of alcoholic beverages, including non-alcoholic drinks, including ginger beer and Red Bull. Dude finally gets hard, so now it's time to plow. <laughs> like other delivery services that have sprung up over the last number of weeks, it has the same drop-off service. Once an order is placed with the club, two dancers will be assigned the delivery. The two women will bring the food to the door while all keeping a safe distance for the self-isolated patron. I'm the advocating service- corpse fucking here. <laughs> Uh, you can't, that's not social distancing. Yeah, but if they're already uh, dead, you're fine. Shoot some fucking ropes. But see, that's still not social distancing. The service will include a slight performance, which Bolden said would be the women wearing pasties and booty shorts. Jesus Christ. They're walking around delivering food dressed like that? Bad things are yep. going to happen. That's not a good thing. But, well, they're, I think they're hoping that everyone's no one's out. Uh, the women will deliver the food, dance for a few seconds, and move on to their next delivery. All the while, keep sanitary with a disinfectant spray. People across the U.S. are self-isolating in order to avoid infection at this point. This comes after Donald Trump signed a $100 billion coronavirus aid package guaranteeing paid sick leave and free testing. Rip the, economic- the baby out of the womb of the mother. Ugh. Uh, the economic relief bill signed Wednesday will enhance unemployment assistance and provide Americans with one point with one billion in food aid. Uh, yeah, okay, the rest of this is uh, pretty much just about the coronavirus, um, not about the strippers anymore. But uh, there you go, man. <laughs> so uh, the worst part about the social distancing, distancing, Matt? Yeah. Christ, let's go lick some assholes. You want to do a little ass play? The answer is going to be no for a long time for a lot of people on that. Yeah, you, you can't do that now. It's all yeah. it's all wrong. Yeah, all of our clips, you can't do any of that. Like, I mean, if you keep six feet, you could probably... Circle jerk! You know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's going to be a large circle. Yeah, I mean, six foot between yep. people. I mean, that's that's a lot of distance. and It's, it's going to have to be a big room. Right, it's just, it's not worth it anymore. No, no, man, just let it be, you know? Matter, they just, just had a bukkake mouth party. <laughs> you can't even do that, because that's not social distancing. Yeah, that's not social distancing. Everyone's going to be right next to one another. God. Yeah, unless you can shoot some fucking ropes from six feet away. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I just don't think it's gonna happen. You're just gonna mess up, end up with a mess on the carpet. Right, and I can't even finger bang a girl with a corpse hand because that's like you know that's getting too close. Yeah, I mean unless you put that corpse hand on a six foot pole. But even then, I touch the hand and then it's unsanitary and we're all back to the same thing. That's, you'd have to spray it. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. This coronavirus, it, man. It's this is not the sickness with which I am down. <laughs> such a bummer it's ruining everything it better be down with it it's gonna get worse for it gets better but <laughs> i know well i've had it man I, i'm fucking done for the night this is cutting into my watch and better call saul time so we better get I, this over with i know man you're willing to fucking pit me out for murder to watch that so <laughs> fucking get to it <laughs> fair enough all right we're gonna play the ending legion promo here we'll have music that is straight out of Erotic Nights of the Living Dead. So everybody be cool. Don't rat me out on this. We'll don't, close out the show. Don't be dicks. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.
you, Matt, but I feel like I am playing fucking Castlevania with that going. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm waiting to throw out a whip and try to kill Dracula over here. Yeah, I'm all Simon Belmont with this shit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> fucking A, fucking A, fucking classics. Yeah, if you would like to learn more about our love of classic video games, you can find our main landing and or launching page, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. There's also our Facebook group that you can join, Cinema Psyops, but you gotta be cool, man. Don't be a fucking narc. Also, we appreciate tasty ass fucking memes being posted there. Yes, all the tasty memes, please. And make sure it's funny and high quality. Don't just like randomly shotgun fucking posts trying to like think that you're going to be cool. All Don't be shocking just for the sake of being shocking. Huh? Yeah, it's, yeah. some creativity behind it. Yeah, make it fucking funny. And if you make it yourself, usually it's funnier than if you just find one that you think is funny. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can find me on Facebook. I am Court Psyops, where you can find pictures of the guy who played Ragnar Lothbrook and put that on your meme instead of a picture of me. That that, <laughs> that, that should happen, Ken, from Rhode Island. <laughs> you can also find Matt on Facebook as Matt Psyop, where he's very sparsely populated in any way, shape, or form, as if he has been under quarantine for quite a while. I've always been under quarantine ever since I was born. <laughs> With good reason, you're a disease-ridden whore. Yep, that's, uh, that's I am a disease. <laughs> you can email feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com, and ask him if Cobra is the only cure for his disease. <laughs> it is. It is. It's the only thing that can happen. <laughs> yeah, you have to actually watch the Stallone movie to get that yeah. joke, and then also to cure of whatever it is that Matt ails you with. Yeah, exactly. You can email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. Let him know that overlong explanations for jokes are absolutely not funny, no matter how he thinks it might be. No, it's still funny. <laughs> They're wrong. That's that's wrong. They're wrong. You can tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the hate-filled shitfest that is Twitter and knows more about film than you do. I'm at court underscore psyop, and he is at psyop Matt. There is also the Instagram where I run that shit like this show. I'm posting all sorts of the tasty-ass fucking memes that I see online for you right there. I do share it to our Cinema Psyops Facebook page as well, but the Instagram is where you get the Insta gratification. And also, it's a lot more hip and cool. It's where all the kids hang out and love my memes yeah it's all hip you're hip you're with it well while you're out there being hip and with it get the fuck back in your house you dumb fucking isolate then kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch yeah.